Hey class, Mr. Modian here with a video to launch uh, a new unit. We've talked a lot about triangles the last several weeks, and today, uh, or starting next week rather, we're going to start our uh, introduction into four-sided shapes, or quadrilaterals. Quad meaning four, lateral meaning side, so quadrilaterals. Whoops. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide, and we'll look at a couple of four-sided shapes. So, my main goal for you uh, today in watching this video is to get a better sense of uh, what the specific names for certain shapes are, because we'll be using these words a lot, and it's very important to understand what is what. So we're going to start off with the oddballs, the ones that don't get a lot of study, but uh, are nonetheless important to, uh, to understand for what they are as well as what they're not. So looking at this first shape in the left-hand corner, we have uh, four sides. So this is just your run-of-the-mill classic quadrilateral. Nothing really special about it. Uh, notice that its sides appear to be different lengths. Don't appear to be any parallel lines, no right angles. Just kind of a four-sided shape. The uh, the next one is different in that it has this unusual angle here, or I guess in a, in a sense the interior angle is there. Uh, and this is what's called a concave polygon. We don't talk a lot about them, but uh, the name of this four-sided shape is called a dart for somewhat obvious reasons. Uh, of these three, the one that gets the, the most study, even though they're all sort of the, uh, the black sheep of the family, uh, is this one here, and this is called a kite. Uh, for one, it kind of looks like a kite, but uh, the reason we call it a kite, or, or rather what, what makes it a kite, is not the fact that it looks like one, but the, the reason that it has adjacent congruent sides. So notice that these two sides are attached and they're congruent, and these two sides are attached and they're congruent. So adjacent congruent sides, uh, or I guess I should be more specific, two pairs of adjacent congruent sides two pairs of, uh, would make this a kite. There's some very special properties the kite has that we'll explore in class, but uh, for now that's what a kite actually is. So here are three uh, somewhat unusual quadrilaterals, which uh, naturally brings us to the more usual cases. So here we have a family of shapes called the trapezoids. In, uh, in British English they call these trapeziums, but uh, trapezoids is what we call them on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, there's an obvious takeaway for the trapezoid. What makes a trapezoid a trapezoid as opposed to the uh, somewhat unloved quadrilateral we saw in the last slide? Well, it has one pair of parallel sides. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, I'll abbreviate here, quad, with, oops, with one pair of parallel sides. So on the left here you have a quadrilateral. Uh, you can notice some properties about it that you might uh, observe. We'll, we'll find those out in class. In the corner here you have a special case of a trapezoid. Uh, whoops, I forgot to mark something on it. My apologies. So these should have already be on, been on there. So it's a trapezoid because it has this pair of parallel sides, but uh, it's a special trapezoid and we call this a familiar word, what's called an isosceles trapezoid. So an isosceles triangle has two uh, congruent sides, maybe more sometimes, but at least two and uh, an isosceles trapezoid has also a pair of congruent sides. So to me at least it looks kind of like a, like a base or a platform for like a statue or something. Um, it's an isosceles trapezoid. So they're both trapezoids, the one in the corner is just a special case. So one pair of parallel sides makes a trapezoid. Well what if you have two pairs, or all four, in a sense, parallel sides? Well, that's our classic figure, the one that gets the most study in mathematics, and that's called the Parallelogram. These are sort of the stars of the show. So the opening acts, nothing too fancy. Quadrilaterals, darts, and kites, okay, fine. Uh, trapezoids, pretty neat. Parallelograms, well, that's where the real action happens. So what makes uh, all three of these parallelograms? Well, uh, the one on the, uh, the corner here is your classic parallelogram, and the reason it's called that is its definition is you have two pairs of parallel sides. So I'm using the symbol there for parallel, not 11, for any Stranger Things fans. Uh, two pairs of parallel sides. Now notice that the other two shapes don't have any of those markings on them. They're not necessarily marked as parallel, but uh, what's interesting is they actually are parallelograms, and we'll prove that fact uh, later in class. Uh, here, of course, you have your classic rectangle. What is a rectangle? The definition here is very important. Notice what word does not appear in the definition. The definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four 
right angle. So right angle is sort of where the name rectangle comes from. Uh, the word parallel doesn't appear, and yet I said earlier these are all parallelograms. Well, they are. That's a consequence of this fact. So the definition is what you start with, and then you can prove everything from that. So a rectangle is a four-sided shape with four right angles. Doesn't say anything about parallel, doesn't say anything about side lengths, just four right angles. Similarly, although in, a, in some contrast, you have what's called the rhombus. So you can see here that a rhombus, very similar to a rectangle, in that it doesn't have anything about parallels in its name, but it has four congruent sides. So I didn't space this out very well, but uh, parallelogram, uh, two pairs of parallel sides, rhombus, four congruent sides, doesn't say anything about it being parallel or a diamond shape, just four sides of the same length, and rectangle, quadrilateral with four right angles. So we'll prove in class that both of these are actually also parallelograms, and that's pretty interesting as to why. Well, there's only one kind that we haven't really explored yet. If you think about the categories we have, we've, if I go back a, sli a couple slides here, we have four-sided shapes without much rhyme or reason to them, just sort of a connection of four pieces, and then you get a little bit of structure here with one pair of sides that never cross, and sometimes some pair of sides that have the same length, and then you get combinations of that with two pairs of parallel sides and then four right angles and four congruent sides. So if you combine a lot of these things together, you arrive at the most famous of all the quadrilaterals, the real superstar, and that's our old friend, the square. So here's the square. So the red markings are part of its definition. So what is a square? It's a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, which is to say it's a rhombus, because that's exactly what the definition is in the last slide, uh, four congruent sides and four right angles. So that's where the red markings come from. It comes from these two facts. So quadrilateral with four congruent sides, that's a rhombus, and four right angles, and that's a rectangle. So a, a square can be thought of as a rectangular rhombus. It can also be thought of as a rhombic rectangle. It can also be thought of as a regular polygon. We've seen that word before in our investigation with patterns. Um, so a lot of special things about a square. That's one reason it's a superstar. It's, uh, it's got a lot of a lot of things happening here simultaneously. And we'll talk a lot about squares and what squares are, what they're not, what makes a square rectangle, but not all rectangles square. We'll look at some logic. So we have a lot of, uh, a lot of new terms here, some familiar, some somewhat more specifically defined than in the past, but it's these terminologies that you want to be very fluent in uh, when we do our investigation on quadrilaterals. So quadrilateral, just a general name, dart, kite, those are specific kinds of quadrilaterals. Trapezoids, one pair of parallel sides. Uh, isosceles have two congruent sides on top of that. Parallelograms, definition, only says something about the parallel sides having two pairs of them. Then you have these other quadrilaterals uh, that happen to be parallelograms, and if you combine a lot of them together, you get the classic square. And that's a good place to end it. So I'll see you in class.